Lineage Cell Therapeutics is a clinical stage biotechnology company developing a unique kind of cell therapy to address unmet medical needs. Considered by many as pioneers in a new branch of medicine, Lineage grows stem cells at large scale and converts those cells into differentiated or specific cell types before transplanting those cells into a patient's problematic area. The company's platform and much of its large patent estate relies on something called directed differentiation. This means Lineage's cells are extensively characterized for form and function, and a single cell line can be expanded to supply the needs of any size commercial market as they're manufactured in-house. The company differs among the growing number of cell therapy companies in a few innovative ways, such as its creation of off-the-shelf therapies. In the Benzinga interview today, we're joined by Brian Culley, the Chief Executive Officer, to discuss more about Lineage's goals and their current progress in the coming year in 2021 and beyond. Brian, thank you so much for being here with us and for doing this interview. How are you doing? It's my pleasure, Michael. I'm doing great. Thank you. Wonderful. Brian, we're very excited to hear more about Lineage and talk a little bit further about the company, some of your goals for this year, and some more details as far as Lineage goes. So let's break into our first question. Brian, can you tell us about Lineage and its technology platform? What does it mean to be a cell transplant company? Well, we call ourselves a cell transplant company because it helps to clarify that we're not a stem cell company. So one of the challenges with this technology is that there are a lot of companies out there that are using undifferentiated stem cells. What we do is we manufacture the actual cells which your body has lost and then we transplant them. So for example, if you lose a certain kind of retina cell, we manufacture the retina cell and transplant it into your body. It's an important distinction that's got uh, a number of uh, advantages compared to some of the more generic approaches. Okay, wonderful. Good to hear and, and kind of a good little background for us to break into it further. Um, tell us more about your lead program for treating age-related blindness. How does that work and what are some more details on that? Yeah, so age-related blindness um, or what's called dry AMD is one of the leading causes of blindness in the Western world. And the hallmark is the death of specialized retina cells called RPE cells. And they're responsible for some important activities uh, which ultimately support your vision. And many times, uh, millions of times in this country, uh, people age and they literally outlive their RPE cells. They begin to die off. It's just part of the natural aging process. So what happens is that when you lose those specialized cells, you can't replace them the way that you can replace, uh, say, skin cells, which are destroyed from a, a wound. The wound... that you still have, and, and in some cases even gain additional vision that you had lost, through the loss of these RPE cells. So it's a completely different non-pharmacologic approach compared to you know pills and bottles, which really haven't worked for this condition. The, there's nothing approved to treat dry AMD. So we, we hope to be the first company to do that. Okay, fascinating. Really good to hear more about that. Um, let's go down the path of OpRegen. What clinical evidence have you guys generated with OpRegen and what are some more background on that? Well, we've treated 24 people with dry AMD with our Opergen uh, lead product candidate. Uh, and we're very encouraged because we've been seeing signs of improved vision. ever demonstrate something called retinal restoration, which is to make that wound in the back of the eye actually get smaller over time. As I said a moment ago, you cannot heal your retina tissue. So you need some sort of external intervention. So we have been able to demonstrate that some of these area of atrophy got smaller over time and we call that retinal restoration. So that's been incredible. And we're looking to demonstrate more cases of that. Uh, but overall, just uh, signals of efficacy and, and the, the tolerability of our treatment uh, and the benefits in both the ana anatomy and the function uh, has been very encouraging and we look forward to conducting later stage clinical trials of Opergen for dry AMD. Okay, great. Good setup for us kind of leading into the next couple of questions here. Let's build off of that a little bit. What is the current treatment landscape like for dry age related macular degeneration? Uh, it's a wasteland. There is nothing approved. The FDA has never approved anything for dry AMD. Now, there is another kind of AMD called wet AMD, and that's widely, wildly successful. So the sales of wet AMD 
products are greater than $10 billion a year, but nothing's been approved for dry AMD, which is remarkable because dry AMD is eight to, eight to nine times more common than wet AMD. So there's a tremendous commercial opportunity, but again, the small molecules and antibodies, those companies have not been successful. We think that the problem is so advanced that when you have cells that are dying off, you have to replace the entire cell. And in doing so, we hope to capture a significant portion of what is clearly a multi-billion dollar commercial opportunity. Okay, very interesting. Talking about that market opportunity too, let's kind of build off of that a little bit. What is the competition like in the market opportunity in general for a new treatment for dry AMD? Well, because nothing's approved right now, it's anybody's uh, any, anybody's game. Um, there are a number of companies that are working on trying to affect a certain pathway. Um, our view is that that's not likely to be the ultimate solution here. Uh, our view is that you can't treat just one small thing that's wrong in the cell. You need to replace the entire cell. Uh, we also have the advantage uh, that like gene therapy, cell therapy can be a one-time treatment. And so that's really exciting. So we think the competitive landscape is uh, is dynamic. There are a number of uh, players, as there always is when there's a multi-billion dollar opportunity. Uh, but history has shown that those small molecules have not been successful. So um, we think we're in a good place. Well, great. And of course, we look forward to seeing the story with Lineage and that market opportunity as we go forward. And I'd like to kind of stick with the Operagen line of thinking here. What are your near-term clinical events and other things coming up with Operagen? Well, in just about a month, we've got a, another clinical update. There's a major medical conference called ARVO at the beginning of May, and we're going to provide some additional data on a bunch of patients that were treated last fall. So that's a very significant milestone for the company. And then later on in this quarter, in the second quarter, of this year, we're going to do our own independent update on our data. So there will be two significant events, uh, clinical readout events or clinical updates on our program that investors can look forward to. So that's not a very long timeline. Okay, great. And again, looking forward to seeing more on that as well. Brian, let's take a quick step back, kind of look at the big picture here. What can investors look forward to in 2021 and even beyond from Lineage Cell? Well, for the short, intermediate, and longer term, there, there's a lot of activity that investors can expect. We certainly have uh, near-term clinical updates. So we've got a major medical conference uh, next month and then another clinical update on our lead program. Uh, the company is well-funded to get past these major events. So you can expect also there'll be news from our spinal cord injury program where we manufacture uh, new spinal cord cells to help people who have been paralyzed after a spinal cord injury and also uh, clinical data on our cancer program, uh, which is also in the clinic. So all three programs in the clinic and longer term, because our technology uh, provides the opportunity to manufacture any of the 200 cell types in your body, uh, really the sky's the limit. We, uh, I sometimes, you know, only jokingly say that we want to be the Amazon of cell therapy. We can manufacture all sorts of different cell types and we can create new programs and, you know, not just treat different tumor types, but all sorts of different diseases and indications where there's an unmet need and, and a big commercial opportunity. So it really is an exciting growth opportunity for investors and, and for me as the leader of the company. Brian, what an exciting story of lineage. We are so excited to watch your progress, continuing to achieve short and long-term goals and become the Amazon, like you mentioned, in your field. So very excited to watch that story. Brian, thank you so much for coming on and joining us in this interview. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Lineage is demonstrating the viability and commercial potential of using allogenic cell transplants to treat or cure serious diseases or conditions that represent major unmet medical needs and large market opportunities. Importantly, they're able to go after multi-billion dollar commercial needs, which have no successful treatments using conventional methods. As the tools and methods used to manufacture and test these therapies and patients are reaching maturity, public policy and investor support for cell therapy has moved in a positive direction. As Lineage prepares to advance their product candidates into later stage trials, they're working to position themselves to benefit from the convergence of these positive factors and help to accelerate the development and commercialization of this novel branch of medicine.